wondered why it's a common stereotype that the royal family are either pedophiles or they're psychopaths. Well, I'm about to show you through mainstream media and only mainstream science articles why this is most likely the case with a lot of royal family members. Let's start with Vlad the Impaler, the inspiration of Dracula, and the blood ancestor of Queen Elizabeth II and the entire royal family. According to CBS News, the link it appears is from Mary of Teck, who was the grandmother to Britain's current ruler, Queen Elizabeth II. So what did Vlad the Impaler, the very recent ancestor of Queen Elizabeth, do to earn such a disturbing title? Here are some stories from Vlad the Impaler's Wikipedia page. This one is from historian Antonio Bonfini. He writes, Turkish messengers came to Vlad to pay respects, but refused to take off their turbans, according to their ancient custom. Whereupon he strengthened their custom by nailing their turbans to their heads with three spikes so that they could not take them off. Right here is a 1499 German woodcut showing Dracula dining among impaled corpses of his victims. His Wikipedia page also describes how creative he was with his torture. He would tie people down to the bottom of a cauldron by their heads, fill it with water, and boil them alive. He would stab mothers and their babies through the same spike. And when he was finally imprisoned for his cruelty, they would find him torturing rats in his cell just for fun. Now let's go to the website of Dr. George Simon, a man who has written three books on psychopathy and is a doctor in psychology. He goes on to describe scientific studies where two twins are separated from birth who both have psychopathic traits, and even though one twin is given a completely different upbringing than the other, they still become diagnosed psychopaths as adults. He says that they make up about 2-5% to of the population. And Dr. Simon says directly, I was most struck by the fact that many psychopaths consider themselves not only very different from the rest of us, but also clearly superior to us, because they did not carry with them the vulnerability that typically accompanies having feelings and a conscience. And it's their pathological sense of superiority, a truly malignant narcissism, that gives the rise to their sense of entitlement to prey on those they regard as inferior creatures. Imagine having this psychopathy ingrained in your brain mixed with the fact that you were a royal at birth. Imagine what that would do to a human's mind. Then here we see the US National Library of Medicine, they did a scientific study, where their conclusion says psychopathy shows distinct genetically based relations with broad dimensions of DSM psychopathology. Basically yes, it's genetic. So let's go over some pedophiles of the British royal family. Let's start with Lewis Mountbatten. First Earl Mountbatten of Burma, he was the uncle of Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, and second cousin once removed of Queen Elizabeth II. On his Wikipedia page under sexuality, it reads, It was said that Mountbatten was attracted to young men in military uniforms and boys in school uniforms. Under allegations of sexual abuse, it reads, The FBI files contain a claim by Elizabeth Wharton Drexel that he had a perversion for young boys. Norman Neild, his driver from 1942 to 43, told the tabloid New Zealand Truth that he transported young boys aged 8 to 12 and was paid to keep quiet. Robin Bryans had also claimed to the Irish magazine Now that he and Anthony Blunt, an MI5 member who was very close to the British royal family, um, along with others, were part of a ring that engaged in homosexual orgies and procured boys in their first year at public schools, such as Portora Royal School. These claims were dismissed at the time. Then again, so were the claims against Jimmy Savile. However, upon Jimmy Savile's death, it was discovered and then reported upon by mainstream news that he was quite possibly the most prolific serial pedophile who's ever lived. Not only has it been confirmed that Jimmy Savile was a pedophile rapist, but that he too was also involved in organizing an underground pedophile ring, where he engaged in sex trafficking children. So how does this relate to the royal family? Jimmy Savile was not just friends with the royal family. He was in the royal family inner circle. It's been widely confirmed that Jimmy Savile was the go-between for Princess Diana and Prince Charles when they were fighting. Even though it's been noted that Princess Diana hated Jimmy Savile and thought he was a creep. You could give the royal family the benefit of the doubt and simply say, oh, they just didn't know about Jimmy Savile's proclivities. But Savile was interviewed by the London police several times for pedophilia and was in the British royal circle. You can't go anywhere near the royal family without intelligence agencies knowing everything about you. 
If Jimmy Savile was on the radar for just the local police agencies, you can bet the farm that MI5 and other intelligence agencies knew exactly what he was up to. But that did not stop Queen Elizabeth from knighting him. There's also, of course, the famous story of the powerful Catholic bishop Peter Ball and his close relationship to the British royal family as well, and of course the fact that Peter Ball escaped justice after MPs and a member of the royal family defended him. Peter Ball was first accused of pedophilia back in 1992, but did not serve justice until around 2005 when he admitted to his crimes. The reason he did not serve justice is because a member of the British royal family defended him. In this article on The Guardian, it doesn't indulge which royal specifically defended him and pulled some strings in the British royal courts, but I'm guessing it was Prince Charles due to their close association. The only thing mainstream sources know for sure is that a member of the royal family did in fact defend Peter Ball and ensure that he was not arrested. So this of course brings us to Prince Andrew, Duke of York, the second son of Queen Elizabeth II, and newly exposed pedophile and close friend of Jeffrey Epstein. Due to the numerous accusations, the photo and video evidence, I think we can safely assume that he also is a pedophile with very low levels of empathy. And just another piece of the puzzle proving that the British royal family is made up of mostly psychopaths and a few pedophiles at least. Our society is corrupt because nobody powerful is ever held accountable for their actions. That's why the Epstein case is so important. If we can hold these guilty elites accountable, it'll make waves in fixing our broken society. Because a society that allows powerful people to get away with pedophilia is in my definition a broken society. So here we are right now, still waiting on thousands more Epstein documents to be released. The court is still waiting on whether or not they will be able to release the documents. And we recently found out a John Doe, who was a part of the, the document leak, filed a request to keep the document sealed. According to mainstream sources, the judge is currently laying down the roadmap for the unsealing. So as most of you are aware, since Epstein's death, the courts have officially dropped the case. According to Ben Swan of RTTV, the case being dropped means that no video evidence, testimonials, photos, or documents will be released until a co-conspirator is charged. Because Epstein's New York home and island has been raided with possible other properties, and we can't dig into what was found on these properties until another co-conspirator is charged. So the other main two co-conspirators in this case are Jean-Luc Brunel and Ghislaine Maxwell, both of which are MIA. They are still nowhere to be found. Another important piece of information regarding this case is a story surprisingly covered by the New York Times. The New York Times has exposed that Forbes, National Review, and the Huffington Post accepted money after Epstein's 2008 guilty plea to run stories meant to reform Jeffrey Epstein's image. These sources painted Epstein as intelligent and a selfless businessman with a love for science. So one final piece of interesting information that relates to this video is a story from CBS News titled Bush's Family Tree that details how the Bush family is related to Vlad the Impaler. From CBS News, the Bush family is related to the British royals, who of course many of you know are not actually British. The British royals are a German family. According to the Royal British Wikipedia page, they are the House of Windsor, and it states the dynasty is originally of German paternal descent, and they changed their name from saxe coburg and Gotha to the English Windsor in 1917 because of anti-German sentiment. So I've been to London twice, and it's probably my favorite city to visit. I love the people there, and I really don't understand why they still respect and allow a psychopathic, pedophilic German family to dictate that much power over them. Because not only do they still hold a lot of power, but they collect your tax money. So to my friends in Britain, you're better than this. But in defense of the British, I've never talked to a single Londoner who had respect for the British royal family. So thank you for listening. Hopefully sometime in the future, we're going to see the unsealing of those documents. And one day we'll wake up to a front page news story of Prince Andrew in handcuffs. That's the world I want to live in. Tune into my channel when that finally happens. Please don't forget to leave a like, and let me know if you need any web design work done. 
check out a link in the description of a site I recently did. It's pretty good. So thanks for tuning in. Take care.